this is so exciting because someday in the future, what I'm doing right now, it's gonna exist as a book. Isn't that so cool? Hey friends. So today I am going to kind of take you along for the ride with me in a day of kind of practical work on my next book. I got some questions asking me how I practically work in plot weaving. Essentially, I went over that in the two videos I posted before about using a seven point plot structure and how I go about using that to work out structure for my books, but I didn't go into the specifics of how plot weaving ultimately looks once I have done all of the major plot work to begin with and how I practically sit down and do this. So I wanted to make a video where I take you along for the ride. I just recently wrapped up book two in my trilogy and that is actually the whole manuscript is off with my editor right now and she is working on giving me lots of notes and it's entirely in her hands right now for the next couple weeks um, which means I do have time on my hands and as a writer you know that your work is never done you got to keep chugging and keep moving on the next project which means that I finally get to start actually working on plot work for book three. This is so exciting because it's the final installment of this series and it has been a long time coming for me. <laughs> Honestly, I think writing a series is so much more work than you think it is once you get into it and you're with these characters for years. It's just, it's kind of exhausting. And I think that middle book, the one that I just finished, I've read from a lot of other writers that finishing the middle book is honestly like the hardest because it's kind of like your saggy middle of the whole trilogy, right? So you have to kind of get through that slog. That being said, um, I am excited to get started on this third book. I do kind of know where I'm going. I knew where I wanted to end up with the whole series when I originally started writing it. So it's not like I'm going into this fully blind. Um, but I have no idea what's gonna be happening to get to that ultimate ending. I kind of know where I'm starting based on how I finished book two. But yeah, so I'm just gonna take that structure, the seven point plot structure, and we are starting essentially with where we ended book two. Um, and I'm total bare bones here, so I'm gonna be taking you along for the ride from like scratch so you can see where I go and how I work on that plot before I even start writing, which is what I'm gonna be doing today. And I wanted to let you guys kind of see behind the scenes how I practically go about doing that. So first off, I have here my trusty whiteboard. I always start with this. I'm, you know, considering how digitally minded I am, I really do enjoy, I think when I'm conceptualizing, like I have to have it analog. So whenever I'm stuck and when I'm starting, so <laughs> I will pull out a whiteboard and some dry erase markers. And actually when I'm working on plot, I use multiple colored ones because I want to make sure that I can keep the different threads separate. So I will assign a color to a certain thread. So like the action plot, which is always what I start with, will usually be black because that's kind of what's gonna drive the overall story. And then I have the love plot, which generally, oh, I dropped my pink. I always do pink because, you know, romance, love, pink. Um, and then I will assign everybody else kind of, you know, it'll be my main characters. And in this case, I think I have four. And those are the points of view that I'm gonna be writing through. So those are the essentially what I bare bones start with. As I start writing the book, I might work on some seven point plot threads for other side characters, um, depending on how much I wanna get into that. But to start, it's usually action, love, and then whatever points of view I'm gonna be writing through. So anyways, that is uh, kind of the general intro. So let's go ahead and hop into the actual work. Here we go. Oh my gosh. 
This is so exciting because someday in the future, what I'm doing right now is gonna exist as a book. Isn't that so cool? I just, I don't know. I love, I love writing. I love doing what I do. So yeah, let's get started. It's the coldest hand that run down this land where the ocean lands. It's the tallest sound, the damn smallest crowd, but the hearts break loud. Far from ever feeling lost with me, I'll push you back towards the land and sea. Okay, that took a little longer uh, than I thought it was going to, honestly. Um, it takes a lot of work for me to kind of work through those things. But now that I kind of have a general layout of my seven points for each character and the romance plot and the main action plot, it's time to take it to the next step, which is also an analog. <laughs> I uh, am gonna grab my trusty cork board, my little portable one, and I am going to grab some post-it notes and some pens and translate everything that I did on the whiteboard onto these sticky notes. And this is where I actually do the manual work of weaving them. So I have them all on their own little notes um, and I will move them around and overlap them on top of one another so I can see the different things that I want to have happen at the same time. Okay, and now that I have all of the kind of plot work down on the cork board, so I kind of have a general layout of how I know I wanna go about overlapping things, now's the time where I feel comfortable enough in my creative process to actually translate it to digital. So I will pull it all into Scrivener and translate them onto index cards there. So then when I go into Scrivener and I open up my project that I'm working on I've got my all of the work that I did fully pulled in here and appropriately labeled and you can see each of my individual threads that I was working on so I've got the action plot we've got the love plot and then we've got each of our love plot and then we've got each of our major characters happening in here as well um, so I can see those easily at a glance and then I can work on the weaving which I do in its own subcategory here. And I handle this by making each main event its own folder. And then I'll essentially just kind of copy these main seven point plot structure index cards over into an organized list of the major events that are going to be happening because that's what's essentially going to be you know driving the story but you can see i've got the hook for all these major ones we've also got a plot turn one for one of the characters and i can see that over here very easily but i also keep it open in a second window pane where you can see them fully laid out here and i use this summary this little synopsis text here for each individual index card um, and that's where I would put what I wrote down by hand on the index card as well and here I just have a general explanation of what a hook is but if I was working on this with my actual novel it would actually be describing what is happening I would keep the title hook but I would describe what is happening in the synopsis itself so then I can easily open all of these up and kind of see how the story is unveiling and which characters are 
experiencing different things at the same time, maybe at the same time as each other or at the same time as other elements of the plot so that we have a lot of really intense things happening. And then you can very easily just keep this open as you're writing. Um, and then in your main window here, you have your manuscript where you're gonna actually be typing. And you can either keep this open over here or you can very easily just keep your weaving open over here on the side. Um, so you kind of have an at a glance look. And then if I need a reminder of what I have written on each of my little index cards, I just keep this version open here. And it's a very easy and simple, straightforward way to translate what you have going on on colored index cards onto um, a digital format and of course each of them are labeled appropriately with the right color and I even give them their own little custom emoji to go along with that so I can keep everything straight um, in my mind and it's very visually appealing which is very helpful when you're writing a very long book with a lot of characters and a lot of different plot elements going on and that's really all there is to it so at this point I will kind of let all that sit and marinate in my brain for a while um, because a lot of times things will change or I'll have conversations with friends or my husband and they'll give me ideas or they'll give me ideas I hate that I know are definitely not going in that direction. Uh, but it, you know, having the wrong answers just makes you move more towards the right ones. So anyways, um, yeah, that sits as it is. And before I even start writing, I will let this probably marinate for like a week, maybe less, you know, depending on when the mood strikes me. I could go ahead and start diving straight into writing because of course while I use these as my general map these are not like things that absolutely have to happen because again if you watch my original plot work videos you'll see that I'm not by any means tied to what I have written down here this is just my general guiding landmarks so that I don't entirely veer fully off course and hopefully that will mean that it translates into a satisfying story. One that is entertaining for readers and, you know, feels good from a thematic standpoint and a full circle standpoint. And this is kind of also interesting because as this is the final book of my Echo series installment, I really have to make sure that everything I'm doing here ties up anything that I have brought up in earlier books so either in book two or book three oops, book two or book one i need to make sure that i get um all of those things like fully tied off so this could also be a good time for me to go and reread book one and two just you know refresh myself or if i have a bible going um take a look at that as well and this is also why it's important when you're doing a series or working on a series um to keep track of all those smaller things so you know that you come full circle with them by the time you get to the end and you don't leave anything open. If you liked this video, um, please make sure to like and subscribe because that will let me know that you're enjoying the content that I'm putting out and you'll be able to stay up to date on all the new content that I'm putting out in the future. This one was really fun to film because I essentially, this is something that I do um, quite frequently and this is such an amazing and exciting time and part of the process of writing a book because it's literally kind of sitting down and just letting your imagination go and following it down all these different rabbit holes and figuring out what is going to work because I can literally just sit here and stare off into space and that's my job. Isn't that so exciting? Writing is seriously the coolest job in the world and I'm so grateful that I get to do this. It's just amazing. Um, so yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other methods maybe that you use when you work on plot or if you have any other ideas or if you have any questions or comments, make sure to drop them below and I will respond. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I will see you all next time. Bye.